Hey there, my friend. I have a great passage of scripture, actually a couple of for you today, uh, that I think will bless you if you got a few minutes. Uh, today is March 10th as I record this, 310. And so, you know, me and my numbers, I've been just kind of this morning meditating on some 310s on 310. And uh, there's lots of great 310s in the Bible. There's 1 Samuel 310. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. But there's a couple others that I was meditating on this morning that uh, I really like, and they actually weave together quite beautifully. And so I want to share this with you. It may take a couple minutes to unpack, but if you can handle some meat, uh, I believe that this will be a blessing to you. I want to first look at 1 Corinthians 3.10 and a couple scriptures that follow after it. Uh, I love this passage because, uh, number one, it explains to us that there is more for us when we say yes to God than for us when we just simply do whatever the heck we want. And so I love that, you know, because I like to know that, uh, that, that it's worth it. It's worth it to pay the price. It's worth it to contend that if you, if you press in, you're going to receive more. If you seek him, you're going to find him. And so I love that. But I also love this passage because it's also full of grace. And uh, it reminds me that when I am weak, uh, there's mercy and there's grace for me. And quite frankly, I've found myself, uh, I've, there are moments in my life where I'm just saying yes and leaning in. Those moments I want to know that, that there's something for me to attain to if I pay a price. But... Um, there are also moments in my life where I've been very weak and uh, where I've just uh, been a little lazy, where I haven't really been willing to say yes to God. And in those moments, you know, it's still nice to know that there is grace and that there is mercy. And here's a passage that really reveals both. And that's why I love it. If you listen to me preach much, you've probably heard me quote this before, and I never mind repeating myself. Uh, so I will do that today for those of you who've been watching for a while. 1 Corinthians 3.10, this is what it says. Paul is speaking. He says, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Christ Jesus. Okay, uh, what he's saying here is you can't build on anything but Christ. If your life is built on anything other than Christ Jesus, you've built your life on the sand and it is going to come to a, a, a really sad ending. All right, you got to build your life on Christ. He says, no one can live, build on any foundation other than the one which is already laid, which is Christ Jesus. But then listen to this. He says, uh, if anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, or wood, hay, and straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Now, doesn't that remind you of a childhood story about three little pigs? Some build with uh, really strong materials that can, that can handle, uh, uh, handle difficult circumstances, and some people build with wood, hay, and straw, things that don't survive big tests, okay? He says, if you build with, you can build with this or you can build with that, but your work will be shown for what it is. It says, for the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. But if it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss but listen to this, but yet will be saved. I love that part, okay? It doesn't say if it's burned up, God's done with you and he's throwing you into hell. No, no, no. Many people think that if, you know, if, if you're not perfect, you're going to hell. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This passage actually reveals that many people build on the foundation of Jesus Christ, yet they build with wood, hay, and straw. They build with things that will not pass the test of fire. And it says that that in the end, on the day of the Lord, on the final day, uh, their life, your life, my life, my work, will be tested with fire. And if it is burned up, 
The builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. What does that mean? It means they entered heaven smelling like smoke. It's like you, you missed hell by a sliver. Whoo, you just made it, but you're in. And uh, I thank God for this passage because I have a lot of friends, uh, Christian friends, who quite frankly love God at some level, but they're not willing to pay the price to build uh, build with wood, uh, build with gold, silver, precious stones. Their lives are just filled with things that don't matter. Okay, they build with wood, hay, and straw. And while they, you know, they do have a heart for God at some level, they're just not willing to pay the price to live a kingdom life. And I still love them. Okay, I love them. You know, I don't run too closely to them because I don't want them to pull me down. But I still love them. And uh, I love this passage because it tells me that, you know what, heaven will still be their home. But you have to understand, heaven ain't going to be the same for everybody. Some people are going to have one type of reward and other people, uh, it will be something very different. And, uh, and so, uh, and so there's, there is more for those who say yes to God. There is more for those who build with lives that have eternal value. You know, Paul said, not everyone is going to win the same way. Not everybody gets the prize. He says in, in for, was it first uh, Corinthians nine twenty four? I think it is. He says, everyone uh, who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. We do it. We do what? We go into strict training. Do you? Do you? Is your spiritual life, uh, uh, would you describe your spiritual life as strict training? Are you disciplined? He said, we do it, or at least he did, uh, to get a crown that will last forever. There's a prize. There's a reward in heaven for those who live lives that please God, that that embrace lives that might might sometimes look difficult, might look like strict training. He says, uh, uh, what's that? Actually, I think I quoted verse 25 and, or 26 in there. What does verse 24 say? Uh, he says, uh, in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Friend, how you live your life matters. How you treat your wife matters. How you spend your money matters. What you eat, what you drink matters. What time you get up, whether you spend time in the word every day, it matters. There will be rewards for those who live kingdom lives. And I'll tell you something, when you stand before him on that day, you're, you're going to want more than just a ticket to heaven. You're, you're going to want to know that you've pleased him and that there are great rewards for you. So as there's 1 Corinthians 3.10, I want to share another 3.10 with you. And it's Philippians, Philippians 3.10. This is where Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to just make sure I quote. Yes, Philippians 3.10 to 12. He says, I want to know Christ. Now, I think that's interesting when Paul says, I want. In other, it's almost like, I wish I knew Christ. You say, Paul, if anyone knew Christ, it was you. Well, he said, well, actually, there's more. There's more. I want to know him in a greater way. He says, I want to know Christ, to know the power of his resurrection, participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Listen to this. He says, not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. That word arrived is the word uh, teleo or teleo-o. Uh, some of you have heard me preach on that word uh, before. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a word that means been completed or finished, okay? What Paul's saying at this point in his life in Philippians 3, uh, he says, I'm not there yet. I haven't been completed. I'm not teleo oh yet, okay? I haven't been finished. But he says, one thing I do, pressing, uh, forgetting what is, or let me quote this, it says, sorry, not that I've already obtained all this or have arrived at my goal, or made, been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me, okay? I press on to take hold of that. Are you doing that? Are you pressing on to take hold of that for which Christ, Christ Jesus took hold of you? And then he says again, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining 
toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize, which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. You see, Paul lived his life, okay? A very disciplined life. In other passages, he says, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I've preached to others, I won't be disqualified from the prize. What was the prize? He wasn't beating his body and living this disciplined athlete-like lifestyle to try to get into heaven. He recognized there's a reward, okay? There's a reward, great rewards for those who actually let God complete them. That's where that word teleo, it means finished, completed. Some people in this life, they let God finish them and some people don't. Now, if you don't let God finish you, it doesn't mean you're going to hell. It just means you're missing out on the heaven on earth he intended for you and you're not gonna have the same reward when you get there, think everyone is sort of like, I often say it's, everyone's kind of like a, like a Lego set. You know, God, you know, you're born, you're just a box full of pieces, okay? But God, if you look at the picture, God has a picture, he has a dream, he has something in mind that he wanted to do with you. He wanted, and he wants to finish in this life, okay? He wants to, that's the, the that Greek word, teleo, oh. He wants to complete you, he wants to finish you. Some people let God start, but they don't let God finish. And where Paul says here in, um, in uh, uh, Philippians, he says, not that I've already arrived. What he's saying is God hasn't done, he's not done with me yet. I'm not teleo -oh yet. I'm not finished yet. I'm not what he designed me to be yet. What's interesting though, is if you look at 2 Timothy 4 verse 6, let me just pull that up here. 2 Timothy 4, verse 6, this is what he says. Paul says, this is at the very end of his life. He's a very old man. He says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. Telio, or telio, same, same root word, okay? I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. And in the future, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, I love this, but everyone who loves his appearing. Hallelujah. Are you one of those who love the appearing of the Lord? In this life, in this life, do you love it when Jesus shows up? Are you contending for more of his presence? Do you love his appearing? Paul says, there's a prize waiting for those who love his appearing. But what's interesting is in this passage, he says, I have finished the course. I have been basically, this is the word, I have been teleo or teleo. I've been completed. So at one point in his life, Paul says, I have not arrived. I have not been teleo. -o. But when he was an old man, he says, finally, he's done. The Lego set, the last Peace has been put on. I'm finally what God intended me for me to be. Take me home, Lord. I'm ready to go. Because I know now that I am one of the teleo. -o. I am one of the ones that you finished, that you have completed. And when I stand before you, I know there's a prize. There's a crown. There's a, uh, a heaven for me that is going to be absolute heaven. Here's another passage for you. I know I'm going long today, but for those of you who can handle a little meat, one more passage, then I'll let you go. It also, it explains, explains the teleo. Oh, I'm going to write a book on this, by the way. Uh, Hebrews 12, 22, it says, but you have come to Mount Zion. Here's a picture of heaven, okay? You want to see what heaven's going to look like? Here's a little, little snapshot of heaven. You've come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels. You're going to see lots of angels when you get to heaven. A myriad is like 10,000, okay? Myriads, tens of thousands of angels you're going to see. And it says to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. Say general assembly. Have you ever gone to a concert and you got a ticket that said uh, uh, general admission? That means just go in, sit anywhere, okay? You, you're, you're kind of in the crowd. You might be at the top, you could be in the middle, wherever, but general assembly, okay? Many Christians, that's where they'll, they'll get when they get to heaven. Here's your ticket, you got in. 
even though only as one escaping through the flames. Many of those who enter heaven but don't have an incredible reward, they still get that ticket that says general admission. Here you go. You sit in this section. But listen, there is another place other than being part of the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. Listen, he says, general assembly, church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. And then it says, then you see God, the judge of all, and listen to this, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Who are those people? Let's keep going. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks better than the blood of Abel. Listen, here's a picture of heaven. You're going to see myriads of angels. You're going to see uh, the general assembly, the church of the firstborn. It's all, most of the Christians are in this group, okay? And then you'll see God, the Father, and you'll see Jesus. But what's interesting, and then the sprinkled blood. But what's interesting is he mentions right between God and the Father and between Jesus, he mentions right between them this other little group called the spirits of the righteous made perfect. Who are they? And how in the world did they get sandwiched between the Father and the Son? How did they get so close to God? How come they're intertwined right there in him? The spirits of the righteous made perfect. You know what that word perfect is? Teleo all. What does that mean? Once again, those who let God finish them. Those who have been completed. Paul, at one point in his life, he said, I have not been teleo all. In other words, I'm not ready to go to heaven yet. I want, I want God to finish. I, he's got to make me into what he dreamed he would be before I leave this planet. All right? I have not arrived. At the very end of his life as an old man, he says, finally, I'm telio, I'm telio. Finally, he's completed. Now I'm ready to go. Now I'm ready to get my reward. I'll tell you something. When you stand before God on that day, you're going to want more than just a general admission ticket into heaven. You want to be one of the ones that let God finish your, finish you. God's been asking you to deal with some area of your life, deal with it. If he told you to quit something, quit it. If he told you to start something, start it. It absolutely matters that you let God complete you. Because when you cross over the river to the other side, and friends, you know what? It's just another couple more days and we'll all be out of the rain. <laughs> you blink, you blink. And we're gonna be on the other side of that river. And you're gonna be so glad that you said yes to God. The things of this world, you know, we were singing that on Tuesday at our prayer meeting. By the way, if you're ever in Drayton on a Tuesday, come and pray, worship with us. We were singing that old song. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. Hallelujah. In the light of your glory and grace, when you really understand who Jesus is, when you begin to turn your eyes towards him, man, I'll re you'll realize the things of this were earth mean nothing. The money, the, the status, popularity, all of those things, those things mean nothing. What matters most is that you let God finish you. Just think of that Lego set one more time. Make sure you let God finish you. Let him keep molding you, shaping you, tweaking you. Let him get that final piece on before you cross over to the other side because you want to be one of the ones that let God finish. Well, that was a long one today. If you're still watching, wow, you're a hungry one. Hallelujah. Maybe you'll be one of the Teleo O2. Hallelujah. That's my desire. I'll tell you something. I'm not there yet. I have not arrived. I've not been completed. He ain't finished with me yet. I'm not ready to go home. But I pray that like Paul, before I cross over, I'll be able to say, I have finished the, my race. I have kept the faith. I have become one of the ones that he finished. Hallelujah. Take a few minutes. Meditate on 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 10 to 14. Meditate on Philippians 3.10. Just soak on those 3.10s today and uh, and rededicate, re-sign re up for obedience again. Say yes to God. It'll take you places. God bless you. If you haven't already, make sure you 
Join our Oil Patch Pulpit community. It just means you get my emails. You can always unsubscribe, but it's just so you know, it's getting harder and harder uh, to get these messages out as the world is censoring more and more uh, truth. And so if you haven't already, just send me an email to feedback at oilpatchpulpit.com. Say, Steve, I like your stuff. If you want to be informed of gatherings we're having, especially this summer, we'll be having more. Uh, just say, inform me of gatherings. And uh, we'll make sure you know, let you know when we're meeting, where we're meeting. Might be out in the wilderness, but um, we'll let you know. God bless you. We'll see you soon.